So we've all been there, right? You have a goal in mind, you're excited, you're motivated, you start working through it, and then you blink and a year passed and you've achieved nothing. And you know what? You're in an even worse place than before you started because at least in the beginning, you were positive, you felt like you could achieve that goal, you were confident in yourself, and now after a year or a quarter or a month of trying and failing, you feel unconfident, you feel crap about yourself, and what's the point of setting goals in the first place, right? Well, I've got a solution for you. <laughs> Just kidding, it's like a huge plug for the book, no. But for real though, I do have a solution for you. And that is coming up with the solid plan that will actually drive you to achieve your goals. Hi everyone and welcome back to Plan for Productivity. For those of you who are new, my name is Andrea and in today's video I'm going to walk you through how to plan for your long-term goals. What it is that you actually need to do in order to achieve those goals, how to break them down, how to create a foolproof plan so you can become the kind of person that actually gets results. To make this video a little bit more interesting, as I go through the steps and things that I want to explain to you, we will plan one of my upcoming projects which is going to be launching Plan for Productivity's Pinterest. So, spoiler alert for those of you who follow me, and um, we'll do this using the Goal Planner template. So this is a free printable that you can get when you pre-order my book, which is where all of this information is coming from. So, grab your cup of coffee and let's get started. So for starters, let's define what these goals are. There are three kinds of goals that I believe that we create for ourselves. Someday goals, current goals, and latter goals. Let me explain a little bit. So someday goals are those goals that you can just go and do them, and that's it. All you have to do is schedule them and get them done. They're more like a bucket list kind of goal, but for something that you actually really want to get done. The second kind is current goals. These are the goals that we tend to create to change the direction of our life. That is the current our life is currently in, so to speak, hence the name. The basic idea is that these are usually gonna be like habits or things you wanna do more often or things you wanna do less of to become a certain type of person. I'm the kind of person that exercises, I'm the kind of person that reads, etc., etc. So your goals might be like read more work out every day, drink more water, those kinds of things. And finally, latter goals are more like projects. These are long-term-ish goals, mid to long-term goals that usually have a bunch of steps in them that you actually have to achieve in order to achieve that bigger goal. They can usually be broken down and they're, they feel more like projects than an actual just attainable short-term goal. And today we're only going to focus on ladder goals. Of course, there's so much more information. I'm planning for the rest of the goals in the book and on other stuff as well. So I use four steps, one, two, three, four, that's it. Super simple for me to actually go from a blurry goal to a clear cut action plan. And those are start at the end, break it down, attach it to a timeline and build the milestone map. And that's it. This sounds super complicated. So let me break it down for you guys. <laughs> Start at the end. So what I mean by this step more specifically is to actually have a clear due date. When is it due and what does due mean? You don't only have to know when you have to have this done, but you also have to know what the end result looks like. So make sure that is super clear. You can describe it as much as you want. You can summarize it in one sentence, but make sure that you're able to write a page about it, meaning you know so much about what the end product looks like for you and how much time you have to get it done. So for me, the goal that I'm planning today is launching Plan for Productivity's Pinterest. And what I mean by this is not just opening a Pinterest account and casually using. What I mean is probably, you know, starting a blog that I can regularly post and therefore post post on Pinterest about it, making sure that my Instagram is connected with my Pinterest so that I can keep uploading inspiration up there, making boards that I think will help inspire other people and that will be useful for people in my page. So these are three very clear objectives that I have within this goal and I want to do this before December. Step number two is to break it down. Now we're gonna start small in this one. The only thing you have to do is brain dump all those little things that you think you might have to do for that project or goal right now. Keep in mind that obviously you're not gonna know everything you have to do as you're working through it. You'll come up with more things, especially little things that you have to get done. But this will give you a very good rough draft of where you're going and how long and how much hours it's gonna take you to actually get this done. And when you're done with that brain dump, you're gonna try to 
find patterns and group these into milestones. So let me show you what this looks like in action. So let's get started with some of the things that I know off the bat I'm gonna have to do. So I know I'm gonna have to do a lot of research, especially on the marketing side of Pinterest. I wanna know how much I wanna post and all that stuff. I need to, okay. okay. So these are some of the basics I could come up with. And some of the patterns I can already see are basically doing stuff that is research-based. And then I also have to do a lot of producing content and a lot of uploading and updating old content. So I think those are the milestones that I'm gonna focus on. So the idea here is when you go into the milestones, you wanna basically write the main milestones. So these are gonna be things that you can group things in and you can then decide how much time you're gonna give each milestone. So I'm gonna do research for number one and then you can also rewrite under here the things you got from the brain dump that you might wanna group here. So for research, I know I have to do the marketing. And this looks super messy. Well, you know, this is what my brain dumps look like, guys. <laughs> but as you can see, I basically looked at all of these and I grouped each of these that I have into these milestones. And now I have an organized group of tasks that I can work through one at a time. Milestones are really just like a way to break down your project. They're bigger than an individual task. They're still a group of tasks, but they are much smaller than the actual goal. And these are super important because they're gonna give you momentum. Every single time you achieve a milestone, you're happy that you did it, you feel proud of yourself, and you wanna keep going. It just breaks the huge, long-term, very far away from now goal into attainable pieces that you can kind of recharge your energy and motivation every time you achieve. Step number three is to attach it to a timeline. And what I mean by this is to attach every single milestone to a time frame. That being said, this should be as simple, broad, and flexible as possible. Make sure to give yourself some wiggle room. What you wanna do in this step is take each milestone and put it into a month or a set of weeks or a week even in order to give your milestone a time frame and therefore your entire project a time frame. Now, it is important to keep in mind that this should be more of an outline than a strict plan. You're not gonna know how long things are gonna take you. You're not gonna know what happened in your life that is either making you fall behind or go much, much faster. So this is just an outline. This is just so you have some direction and you have a clear vision of where you're supposed to be at at all times. So I know, for example, that I had to finish a goal by December and by November I had to have achieved, I don't know, three of my milestones and I've only achieved one, I know I'm falling behind. This is more of the starting step to actual calendarizing your project. So these are my four milestones. Now let's pretend or let's decide that I'm going to do this project in two months, right? Still long-term or midterm goals. So now we're gonna take these four milestones and attach it to a timeline. I provided two in the templates because you can do one as a draft and one as an alternative, or you can get started in one and then update it when the project goes on. It's just giving you some wiggle room. So the goal at the top is going to be Sorry guys, my handwriting is just terrible. <laughs> That's what medicine does to you. All right, so now you see over here that we have month and milestone, and that's usually because milestones are still long-term enough that you can group them into goals. But you can break this down as much as you want. So for example, if this was January, you could put January week one, January week two, January week three, whatever you want. I said I'm gonna do it in two months. That's the goal. So November and December. We're gonna take the first one, which is going to be research at the beginning of November. Then the second milestone that I'm gonna do in November is to upload old content. This one I think might take me a little longer than the research part, but again, I wanna do this in November. Now we're moving on to a new month and in December, I would wanna be doing the whole marketing aesthetics and launch. Let's say by December, which is my deadline, the launch. What that means is that in turn, I have basically two weeks for each one. Now this timeline provides you with six steps for six breakdowns and that's because this could be a six month project. I'm taking a very small project and extending it a little bit because I have other important things to do. This will already give me a very clear outline. I know that by mid November, I should be done with research and I should start producing and that at the beginning of December, it should basically be ready for the launch. 
So this is something I dive way deeper in in the book, but the basic idea here is to break down those milestones even further. And this is the holy grail of the planning system. This is where you're gonna get actionable, where you're gonna get results, where you're gonna be able to stay on top of it by breaking it down to such a small level. So I do this by using what I call the letter of thought. See what I did there? Okay, just kidding, back to the video. So, <laughs> the ladder of thought. This is something I created in order to make it easy for you guys and for me, honestly, to break down goals without having to do much thought, you know? So this is the ladder of thought. Basically, you wanna go from a goal to how you're going to achieve this. The first thing you're gonna think about is the goal at large. So this would be, now you're gonna think about the milestone that you're working towards. So we're starting at the beginning. So the milestone that I was working for is research, right? That was my first one from the timeline. Research as you define from the brain dump and from what you're doing at the moment will have a lot of little things that you have to get done in order to achieve that. What you wanna think about is what is the thing that you're gonna do this week that will bring you closer to this milestone. So for research, what am I going to do this week starting Monday that will allow me to fulfill the research milestone? And that will be a Skillshare class. And arguably the most important part is you wanna break this down into a routine. And what a routine means is when am I gonna actually get that done? Am I gonna work once a day? Am I gonna do it on Monday? Am I going to do it every single day after work? So what I am going to put for this time is in my evening, evenings after uh, work, dedicate 30 minutes to this project. This is when you're trying to answer when you're going to get that done. So now I know that every day I'm going to dedicate 30 minutes of my day to this project, meaning to doing a Skillshare class for Pinterest that will lead me to finish the research that I have to do, which will eventually lead me to launching the Pinterest. This is just a train of thought. This is the thought process that you're going to follow. And now we're gonna do the same thought process for the rest of the milestone map and try to fill in as much as we can. This is the famous milestone map, or what I call the milestone map. Um, over here you have an area to define them a little further so goal due date why you're doing this goal and some notes over here provided three months for you to fill in do the time lapse and let me show you what this looks like so this probably isn't the best example that i picked because i'm putting two milestones per month right so this is probably not ideal. You would wanna have one milestone per month so that you can just focus on that, but it works either way. I just have to know that, let's say this milestone, I'm gonna do week one and two, and this one on week three and four. So as you see, I have the weeks over here. This is one, two, three, and four. And what you wanna do is write down what outcomes you're gonna do each time. So first for this one, I'm going to do all about Skillshare. And I really want to just do my research in terms of like learning about other places. And then the second week to finish up my research, I'm going to see other examples and I want to see what I have to do. So that's going to be part of my research. I want to define the rest of my to-do list for this project, basically. Or weeks three and four, so you would treat this as the weekly outcome that I, one thing that I want to achieve that week that will bring me closer to the milestone, which is uploading all content, is that week three, I'm going to focus on Instagram content. And then week four, I'm going to focus on YouTube all content. And then finally, you want to write the routine, right? What I'm going to do on a regular basis in order to achieve these weekly outcomes. As you saw, I left a lot of the weekly outcomes and sometimes even the milestones blank because things happen, life happens, and you have no clue what could happen. How likely is it that I am accurately predicting that far into the future? Not very likely. So that's why I like to leave these mostly blank. The idea is that you'll have this milestone that already started for the first month or for the first few weeks, and you can come back to it and move along with it as you go. You have a very clear deadline, you have a very clear timeline already, so you know how to keep filling it in and always feel free to rely again on the train of thought. Sorry, 
a ladder of thought in order to be able to fill in this milestone map. What I like to do is come back to this at least on a weekly basis to redefine what my weekly outcome is going to be for that specific goal. And a little bonus if you want to go the extra mile if you're kind of like me a little bit extra a little bit neurotic to be honest but <laughs> let's say I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> bonus! That was it. In a previous video, I talked about setting up the week in your bullet journal and some of the things that I make sure to include in every single weekly plan that I make, which again is one of the things I talk about in the book, Journal Planning Magic. I'm sorry, I know this video seems like a huge plug for the book. It's not. Um, there's just honestly so much stuff in there and I keep bringing it up, but I'm done. Back to the video. So one of the things that I include in all of my weekly spreads is the goals section. Some of the things that I want to achieve that week that are important and that are going to drive me forward for each of those goals. And guess where those come from? Mm -hmm. The milestone map. <laughs> those are more specifically the weekly outcomes for each of my goals. So what you want to do is refer back to your milestone map, look at what outcome you have to get done this week in order to keep moving forward and to be able to achieve the milestone at the end of the month and rewrite that in your weekly spread just so you have it there so it's visual so you don't forget and the process of rewriting also just gives it a little bit more of importance and it just solidifies that in your mind a little more just a little extra part of the routine that i do every single week in order to keep moving forward towards my goals all the time and that is it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I would love to have you guys back here. If you like this video, you'll probably like the how to set up the weekly plan video that I just mentioned. Or you can also watch the sneak peek on the journal planning magic video where you can learn a little more what the book has to offer. Remember that you can pre-order the book and get this free template if you just send me an email or a DM with a screenshot of your pre-order. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.